Hey, my name is Michael, and in this video, I'm going to be unboxing Dark Souls card game Seekers of Humanity expansion. My videos are unscripted and unedited, so enjoy. So we have a look at the back. Seekers of Humanity expansion includes two new classes, the Cleric and the Warrior, and Invaders and Bosses. It says the Bosses are from Dark Souls 2. Here's the front again. There you go. Let's open this up. Be careful not to cut the box. The box is nice. What do they call that? Linen. You see the texture on there. There we go. If you look over here, you can see the texture on it. There we go. Here we have instruction book table of contents it looks like there's only seven pages in this book credits there's an introduction there is a contents shows us 28 clerk cards no oh, starting cards 28 warrior starting cards two character data cards. It tells us how many treasures, what the emblems on the treasures mean, the icons, how many of the enemy cards we have. Uh, we get some playing boards, some tokens. Here's some setup. Uh, embers, invaders. There's the embers, there's the invaders. Boss encounter instructions, alternate modes of play, and that's it. Here's uh, icon reference on, on the back. Let's see, king of average would say there's no index. I don't know if you would need an index with such a short manual. We'll have to ask him. These are. The icon tokens, there's the back side, and oh, I assume that's the back side. And this looks like the, I assume this is the front side. I imagine these are invaders. I'm not going to punch everything out right now. I'm not reviewing per se, this is just an unboxing and a showing. This is pretty nice. This has the same texture that's on the box. You can see in here the texture on here. Well, here's one side, and here's the other side. There are uh, the squares here. Let's see, three, one, two, one, two. Three, two, th oh, they're different, yeah. And then the art on the back is different. And then the boss icons are different. So on this side, you get to fight these bosses. On this side, you fight these bosses, and the rooms have different difficulty. Then inside, we've got three... I don't know if I want to call these decks. Three packs of cards. They're all wrapped up. 
got this. Nothing behind it. Let's just pull the cards in. Let's open up the cards and look at them. I want to be careful not to cut the cards. Card magicians ask you to cut the cards, but I do not want to. That's probably good. All right, what have we got? Cleric. Flip this card to heal each character one. I don't know if we're gonna look at all of these. These cards feel pretty nice though. These cards have the same texture as everything else. You can see that when I shine the light on it. Some people would argue that these textured, I guess, linen cards are too reflective. And when they're on the table, if you have too much light, then they're hard to see because they reflect when they're on the table. Flip this card over to heal each character one. Flip this card over when you rest at the bonfire. That's some pretty decent artwork. And it looks like this is the rest of our, I'm guessing this icon up here is for Cleric. These are probably the Cleric starting deck. That looks familiar. Is it the same on every card? Oh, these are all stamina cards. Red stamina, blue stamina looks like a graveyard, a misty looking graveyard. Purple stamina looks like, that's pretty cool. And then we've got warrior. All right, I guess we're done looking at the cleric. Warrior, flip this card over to hit the whole targeted row with this card's next attack. And flip it over when you rest. We got weapons for the warrior. Northern armor, shields, axes, yellow stamina. I like the artwork. I like the way these feel. These just feel nice. Yellow stamina, blue stamina. This is going to be the warrior starting deck. The axe up here matches the axe on the warrior card right there. We got purple stamina. I think the cleric had some purple stamina. Now we have some embers. These are new, I think, with the this expansion. I don't recall seeing embers in the base game. Draw a card while this card is in your deck. You gain three max deck size. Only a single ember may be in each player's deck. Two, three, four. Looks like we got five embers. These look like treasures, I'm guessing, because it got a treasure chest up here. Broadsword, a crescent moon, a big axe, a huge axe. A thrall axe, a handmaid's dagger, split leaf greatsword, great lance, ew, 
and a life ring. Ew. All right, let's see what else we've got. That was the cleric and the warrior and some treasures. Let's open up this one next. Oh, look, I was cutting the end, but it looks like there's a thing here to pull. There you go, a pull tab. But I can't get it open from the pull tab. I might as well just cut the end. Oh, I think that looks like a boss. This looks like, I'm thinking, a boss card. Each time this card performs an area attack, cards and spaces adjacent to the target spaces suffer one damage. Oh, an invader, not a boss, an invader. And these icons are for one player, he's got five health. And for two players, he's got seven health and so on. Marvelous Chester. It looks like they each have their own, I don't know, abilities or behaviors. I'll say those are abilities, skills. Daughter of Crystal, Kramheld, Paladin Leroy, Knight Slayer, Sorig, Butchery. Ooh, that's bad news. Mad Lunge. Oh, wait a minute. These are boss cards. Yeah, those gotta be boss actions. Is there a boss here? Soul Spear. Oh, this guy hits the whole board. Three hit combo. Sword Whip. I don't know what these are. I'm going to have to look. They're still red like uh, uh, Phantoms, Invaders. Maybe, maybe these are the Invaders. Oh, these got to be the Invaders action decks. Yeah. All right, those have got to be the Invaders action decks. Yeah, because that's one of the invaders we looked at in the other pile. I want to see some bosses. Here we go. That's not a boss, though. That's just a monster. He's got one armor, one health. He attacks whoever's standing over here. He does green damage. Yeah, yeah, he stands in this spot and he attacks the character that's in that spot. And this one, he attacks whoever's there and he pushes. That's kind of cool. That's a wound or bleeding. Poison. This guy poisons. That guy hits the whole row. I bet all the bosses are in that last deck. Yeah, let's open up that last deck, that last pile. 
Let's see if I can use this thing. There we go. That worked a lot better. Crystal Chime. Oh, we're looking at a, a weapon. Is it ranged? Profaned Flame. Oh, that hits the whole row. Firestorm. Ah, oh, the character using it takes two damage. Acid Surge. Minus one defense. Armor. More armor. A shield. Well, this card is in your hand. Subtract one damage from each attack you suffer. Big Axe. Big Sword. Fume Ultra Great Sword. Knight's Ring. Pursuer's Ultra Great Sword. Soul Great Sword. Armor of Thorns. This is pretty much it. It's just a card game. Do we have bosses? There we go. That's a boss. The last giant. The Pursuer. Those are going to be the bosses. Smelter Dragon. And Old Iron King. Yes, I said Iron. And these are going to be their behavior decks. All right, well, that's essentially it. It's just a bunch of cards. This is a co-op game. If you're not familiar with Dark Souls card game, it's co-op. I played it with my kids. We had three players. It supports one to four. We played it with three and either we were just using the base game and either we were doing something wrong or it's extremely easy with three people going. So I can see how it'd be more of a challenge with fewer people, but working in a larger group, it seems slightly over overly easy but i guess that would match online gameplay whereas more people in your group would make a game easier so i'm not complaining i'm just talking so there it is now let's put this underneath There it is. Those are the contents of Dark Souls, the card game, Seekers of Humanity. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it wasn't very entertaining. I wasn't trying to amuse or anything. But I hope, uh, I hope you found this informational and a good use of your time.